Contenders. Who will lead the Hanguk GM's change? This is contenders for selecting the next hero for Hanguk GM's next generation. This is Young Deli for contenders. We will select the final winner today. I'm Ellie Zhang. Hello, I am PJ Rogers, and I'm excited to be here. I'm excited and then a little sad at the same time because we're going to say congratulations to one and then bye to two. Quiz, debate, and mission, and presentation. And this fourth episode, just one person can be real employee for Hanguk GM. Mm -hmm. So, just let's uh, take a look at the recap for our last three weeks. Please have a look. Contenders with Hanguk GM, last episode. Hanguk GM contenders faced cutthroat competition from the beginning. After much deliberation, eight finalists were selected, and their first challenge was... First challenge is the quiz. Taekwondo. Panda. With the Dalai Lama. Libya. <laughs> YouTube, Nepal. Six contenders passed the first challenge. Now, they must give presentations Nuclear and debate to survive. Man-made disaster. Solar energy is not expensive at all. Who do you think is going to live there? Anybody will be safe with um, a nuclear power plant in their backyard. Why not? That detects the level of the sunlight. Our target market is fashion aid traveler. You would be able to fly off. The winning team standing goes to South Pole. Young, congratulations. And the last contender, Ju Jinshun. These four contenders will continue to compete. There isn't much time to celebrate. They must now tackle even more challenging missions. The contenders commit to completing their mission with great passion. And the final judgment awaits. As a marketer, what are you thinking of the real uh, buying process? You're focusing totally on visual impression. I just struggle with the 1920s style gangster in the back seat who then wants to drive the car. So, who will be safe and who will be eliminated? So young, congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Second winner is uh, Hong Chun. Congratulations. Wow. congratulations. The final contender going forward for the next round is Ju Jin Shin. Oh, wow. Now, only one final survivor will take the crown. The final episode will start right now. Wow. We have only three top three contenders now. They were surviving the very stiff competition. They were very close call. So it's time to introduce the three surviving contenders now. Please welcome them. A big grandiose welcome back. You have made it from the, the many that applied down to the eight and now down to the three. Uh, Hong Chol, uh, did you see yourself here at the beginning? Um, I got to know all the candidates. Uh, candidates. They're all well uh, qualified, so I didn't expect to be at this moment now. But I'm happy. Well, welcome back. Jin Xiu, you had a very difficult mission. <laughs> and I wanted to say to your mentor, you go sell a car. I wanted to see him sell a car. But uh, it was a great mission, and you did very, very well with that. What did you, what did you think? Um, like I said before, I didn't really expect to sell a car from the first place. Uh -huh. I just wanted to inform them. And um, I wanted to make future customers for Hanguk GM. And I think Hong Chol is lying. I, I think he knew that he was going to be here <laughs> because he's very smart. 
like So Young, So Young too. Yeah, So Young, uh, your mission too. There, by the comments, maybe you thought, oh, they're, you know, they didn't like what I did, they didn't like what I did, and then you ended up being the first one chosen. Yeah. Did that shock you? Yeah, it really did. Cause yeah, it was really honor because like other competitor was really talented, and I really know because I saw them for several weeks, and I'm trying to be the first place this week too. Well, good. Good luck to all of you. You guys have overcome the most difficult challenges, and I think you have done a great job. But however, it will be very difficult also for the judges to, you know, select only one winner today. Mm -hmm. We have three panel of judges. Please welcome Stephen McKinney, the president of McKinney Consulting and the governor of American Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and next, Christopher Taylor, the vice president of HR from Hangul GM. And we have Professor Song Seryan, an international lawyer and a law professor at Kyunghee University. Thank you for joining us. Gentlemen, I think that you have all conducted many interviews, uh, given advice to many uh, probably college students and then college graduates uh, throughout your life. What are some things that you would say that you might are looking for today to inform our contenders of. Uh, Professor Song, could you give us your comments? Well, it's going to be a tough job, but I'll be looking for will and skill. Uh, to me, it's a dedication uh, about cars and about the marketing. And that's what I'll be looking for, but also the skill to go with it. Uh, we'll be looking for some, someone here who seems to understand the arts and science of marketing. Great. Mr. McKinney. Positive attitude and ability to get it done. <laughs> Great. Positive attitude and the ability to get it done. I love that. Christopher. I would say that I'm looking for two things, uh, two things that are very important to us in Hanguk GM. Uh, the first is self-confidence. This is your chance to tell your story, not someone else's. So that's a very important criterion. Uh, the second thing is humility, and that is a mixture of humility and capability. Um, and that, for our company, is where East meets West. Our challenges start here in Korea, and they span the entire globe to over 150 countries. So bringing the best of those two um, capabilities uh, to the job, I think, is critical. So contenders must keep in mind their um, standard for evaluation. And we have the special jurors here for help us to determine the final judges. They evaluated as well. The judges. Mm -hmm. We have the 30 employees from Hangul GM, from also HR, PR, and marketing department. Thank you for coming. So it's time to see the contenders' challenges. Just let's get started. These challenges are divided into three rounds, and the contenders will be evaluated on their marketing knowledge of Hangul GM. The first round mission is create an advertising slogan, an image for the new brand of Chevrolet. We gave the topics beforehand, and let's see what they have come up with. Hong Char, are you ready? Uh, always. Yes, you're right. the first one to come up. Okay. When you're buying a car, basically you can just go to a nearby dealer and buy whatever car. But a car today needs, means so much than that. It means um, it defines who you are. It shows an image of who you are, what kind of dreams you have. Now, at Chevrolet, um, I want to present uh, my slogan, which is um, a part of you. Chevrolet wants to be a part of your dreams. So that's why I came up with the slogan, part of you. If you look at the image, I'm not showing you a car, a picture of a, a vehicle or something. I'm showing you a picture of something that is very small. But this small bolt represents um, precision and uh, quality and service that has been um, keeping uh, Chevrolet for 100 years. So this is the image that I want to show to the general public. Now, we stand by our product and by the quality of the product. 
this also represents service. Now a small ball like this may, may not mean um, so much to other people, but even in the smallest boat, we can stand by the quality of our product. Okay, so that is the image that I want to pursue. Uh, Chevrolet uh, supports your dreams. So that's why Chevrolet is a part of you. Thank you. Wow. Very good job. So you try to illustrate the mechanic body and human being and life and more. Very impressive one. Yes, yeah, just one. So do you have any comments or questions, judges, please? I definitely give you an A for effort. I think um, that it was well thought up around a bolt. The, the biggest credit I would give you would be that uh, you talked about the 100 years and holding things together. Um, probably about the least exciting thing you could have picked. Um, so it was almost like you had to prevail in spite of a challenge where somebody said, hey, take this bolt and make a, an advertising slogan for it. Um, so I give you credit. I think you did a nice job of something that I never would have expected you to pick. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, I think there may have been some other things that you could have considered picking to really grab the hearts and minds of those potential buyers. Okay. I think what appealed to me was that you picked a slogan without showing a car. So uh, for that effort, I think it was, a, it was a good effort. But at the same time, a bolt it's not really specific to the car, first of all. And when I look at the loose bolt like that, I kind of get agitated. A car is missing a bolt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So I think the overall package should be kind of coherent and tight to give the people that this is about the car slogan. And uh, although I like the part of you, the message, but it should be a little bit, a little bit integrated around the car and Chevrolet. And next turn is Jin Xiu, and I guess you are ready. Yes. Please. I have actually created an, a printed ad. If you could realize it is King Kong holding Chevrolet instead of um, beauty. So it kind of speaks for itself. Um, the title is Chevrolet Effect. It means that um, Chevrolet had, even has the ability to even melt the heart of the greatest, um, strongest man or the monster. And I think it appeals to both men and women because men are, car, men are not, I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. Hmm. Well, men wants to get approval more from men than from women. And this looks like that Chevrolet is getting approval from the men, the strongest men in, probably in the world. So it appeals to men. And it, I think it's more obvious how it appeals to women. Um, one of the biggest dreams that women have is to tame their men. And this Chevrolet is actually taming, has tamed the biggest men, the strongest men. So, um, I think this would also, it would achieve the dream of women for, by buying the Chevrolet. I came up with a lot of slogans, but I decided to have this one on there because it explains the image better. And also because MV and Chevy rhymes too. Yep, so that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you. When it comes to making your slogan, you try to make a kind of rhyme, Envy, Chevy, and you try to make a good use of the contrast between the King Kong and the Chevy. <laughs> so the scene is vivid and very rich. Very nice job. Judges, can we have your uh, comments and or opinions or thoughts, questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, w with the explanation, it made perfect sense. It's very clever. I like it, the fact that it rhymes. But there was a sp split second when, when I first saw it, uh, King Kong, its expression is not really uh, visible. But if you, if you can make it either smiling or having a kind of expression of looking at the car with really a little bit of passion, I think people will get the clearer idea uh, what the message you're trying to convey. 
I kind of take a different approach. Um, when I looked at that, I got it immediately because I know who King Kong is and <laughs> it's universal and he, he's not a happy guy. So that to me um, came through pretty clearly. What I would say is this was more powerful without the explanation. The explanation was good, but you lost me because you went in 153 directions with it. So I think you gotta be more crisp and concise and go for one good solid message. And then if the buyer or the viewer takes something else from that, great. Thank you, thank you for your comments. And So Young, finally we'll, we'll go to So Young. Yeah. Let me give you an occasion. I think it's just a piece of cake for you, like 1911 plus 100. What's gonna come out? Yeah, in Chevrolet, 7.4 is the answer. Passing through 100 years, um, passing through 100 years, um, since the beginning of the year of 1911, uh, sh now Chevrolet became the world famous com car company who sells a car every 7.4 second. Why? Then um, we can find the answer here. Chevrolet is always a plus for your car. When you have like when you have an equation car plus hero, we'll have hero car Camaro who saved the world in the Transformer. Um, I wanted to show the um, positive image of our logo because uh, we are changing stage uh, our logo from the a previous image, so I wanted to focus on um, show a positive image, positive image of our new slogan and logo. So, if you have a Chevrolet with a plus logo, you're gonna always have a plus alpha. So my slogan is a car plus Chevrolet more than a car. Thank you. <laughs> That was very impressive and I could see your passion in it. Let's hear from the judges. Um, I can see a lot of good points. Um, I had a fairly good idea what the 7.4 was, but that's only because I've heard it so many times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think most people would have a clue what that equation is, so yeah. I think you know, you would have to, if you turn this into a brand campaign, yeah. get them quickly, mm -hmm. because otherwise I think you're gonna have people trying to figure out as you're talking or as the sound bites are going to tell them what it is, they're, they're gonna be trying to figure, figure out the puzzle. And some of the message can get lost. Um, yeah. Some of the meaning can get lost and the lack of a message is what I would say. I'm a little lost at words, a little bit. <laughs> I, I agree, I, I see some possibilities. I, I agree with what he said about the, the getting it, the, the 1911 to 100, 7.4, I think that's a hard sell. I like more than a car. The shorter phrase, the nice feeling, I think there has some possibilities there, and I like the, the Transformers connection. So I think some, you did some good job. the scores of the judges. Please, show us the score. Wow. Wow. Hong Chul, you were able to squeak out a win here. <laughs> Uh, the way the judges beat up on you, I, I, you know, that surprises me, but congratulations. Thank you. So, based on the first round score plus second round score, mm -hmm. the end of second round, one contender will be eliminated. Mm -hmm. So, it's a time to move on the second round. Let's get started, second round.
second round will test contenders' logic, spontaneity, and their values. Mm -hmm. It will be moderated by PJ. And please. Yes, we have hypothetical uh, circumstances that we're going to explain to you and give to you, but they're, they're real. They're things that could happen to any of us in a business world at any time. Okay, Hong Chul, it's your choice. You get to choose uh, one, two, or three. Uh, I'll choose two. Choose two. Okay, great. Jin Xiel, you get the second choice. I'll take three. You're going to take number three. And you, my friend, get number one. Okay, thank you. By default. <laughs> okay. All right, since So Yang picked number one, here's your situation. You are a new car salesman and your sales record last year hit bottom low. The real reason behind this poor work performance is because you haven't met the right kind of customers. One potential client has been requesting numerous meetings to ask detailed questions but hasn't committed to buying a car yet. But you have politely answered all the questions and have provided great customer service. Now you're on your way to meet this person for the tenth time when you get a call from a customer you met yesterday saying he wants to buy the car. Would you choose to keep building a relationship of trust with your old client or would you choose to go to the new client who might sign a contract that day and increase your sales record? I'm going to choose the old customer because I already, I, um, I already did a lot of things to my old customer and it's really huge energy. And I cannot certain that my new customer is going to buy, um, buy at once after he say, I'm going to buy a car. I think making a trust with my customer is a big deal in sales. So I'm going to deal with my old customer. And if I have a time, extra time, I'm going to deal with my new customer too. OK, so you've met with this, co this customer 10 times. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of company time, right? Yeah. And so do you spend so much time? Why would you spend so much time with this customer when this other customer says, I'm going to buy, I got cash. Where do I write the check to? Oh, really? And, and you're going to and you're going to choose this this old customer that you keep, I'll call it wasting time with. I think it's not a wasting time because like people are very different. And I think my old customer is really like cautious person. So. I know car is a expensive material to buy, so I think it has a like, smart customer. So if I buy, I, I sell a car to my old customer, I think he's gonna have really good relationship, and I think he's he's gonna make um, another potential customers for me. And because like ten times, like you said, it's really huge thing. So I cannot just throw it away. I, I think after two or three times, I think I can sell my car to my old customer. And so the point is, okay, so th this day you say, oh, no new customer that wants to sign and give me a check now. No, thank you. I'm going to go to this old customer that, I, that I'm going to try to convince again. And then the next day, someone else says, hey, I need a car. I want to buy a car today too from you. And you're going to go to the 11th appointment with him too? If it has a cash and show that, it's going to be diff different. But um, I don't believe customers that much because if I say I'm going to buy a car, I don't know about my new customer and I don't know how, how he decide and uh, what he like and what he need. You, you can't trust customers. Well, then you're trusting th this other person for 10 times. Then, then, I, then I could know about him. So. If I have limited time, I think meet one more who I really know is more effective. So, yeah. so at the end of the day, regardless of what happens, you're going to go with the old one. You're not going to pick up the new customer. But a day is long. I, I think I can <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but yeah, if I, uh, if I need to meet just one, I'm going to meet my old customer okay. because I know him. Yeah. OK, good job. And why don't we hear from the judges? Any comments or questions? Now, my, my question is, if you, you said that uh, by the 10th time, you would know what your old customer is like, uh, what are the criteria? I mean, uh, for all I know, because I don't know that customer, he might just 
like meeting you, or he's lonely, somebody to talk to. <laughs> I mean, there have been myriads of reasons why this person is meeting you for the tenth time. Uh, what are some criteria in your mind to decide that this is going to be a good customer going forward? Because, like I said, if a person takes his time for 10 times to meet a call dealer, I think he's really cautious and he's really like, smart about car. So if I sell a car to that cautious person, I think he's going to be more like precious customer for me other than just meet me and buy a car. Because if a, a person who really knows about my car and he is really satisfied with my car, and then he's gonna speak about me. And he, cause he's gonna like um, recommend me to his friend. Like I meet him, I meet her for like 10 times and the car was really good. And, but if I sell a car to my new customer, it's not gonna be like that, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I applaud you in keeping your promise. When you promised you had a meeting with that client, even though it was the 10th time, I think that's honorable that in business we have to do that. If we make a promise to do something, we have to follow through. However, I think knowing, if, knowing in this scenario where maybe you've had a track record of limited success, as according to the story, then I think I would be thinking about maybe I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. And so when that call come in, I perhaps would have, may have thought about, since you had met that person nine times before, and you know them better than this other customer, you oh. could maybe speak to them and say, can we delay this appointment? Because oh. you know them better. Could we delay this later this afternoon or something? I have an urgent call with someone that wants to buy right now. Oh, yeah. And by doing that, that might also spur and motivate that customer you've seen nine times to get off the pot and buy Yeah. that afternoon. Yeah. Oh, that's really, yeah. Okay, very good job. Um, between the trust of old um, customer and the new relationship with the new customer, Soyoung chose the trust and long-term relationship. So we can admire your long-term viewpoints. Very good job. And uh, next is Hong Chul's time. Here's the second situation. You and a close co-worker are collaborating on a project together. Both of you work very hard and it is almost finished. But your boss and a co-worker had a disagreement regarding the project and they both insist that they are right. You are in the middle of this disagreement and must present your opinion. If you side with your co-worker, you would be disregarding your boss's expertise and experience. And if you side with your boss, you would be betraying the comradeship you developed with your co-worker. What would you do? So um, in this situation, I would have to say that I would uh, side with my boss because um, my uh, chemistry my, with my coworker and um, us seeing eye to eye on a project is important. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's my boss's neck on the line. Like I work for my boss, I don't work for my coworker. So it's is my responsibility and my coworkers to come up um, with an idea that our boss can support. So I think that um, I would side with my boss. Okay, you're saying, okay, uh, coworker, even though your opinion, I agree with it, uh -huh. and you're right, and boss is wrong, uh -huh. you're going to still say, boss, you know what, I support you. That's what you're telling me. Um, I'm, I'm saying that first, before you follow, say yes, but you also have to give, um, uh, let out the pros and cons, okay? If uh, we, we understand why you think this is correct and we want us to follow this, but also keep in mind that this is um, also something that could affect uh, the outcome. So you should also make him notice the, um, the hazards or um, th the things that can get wrong if we follow this choice. Now, if he understands that and makes that choice, I think uh, is the direction that you're following. So you're saying, I will, ch boss, I, su I support you, boss, but you got to take into consideration this and this and this and this if you take that decision. Yes. So you'll try to teach your boss while you're supporting him. Uh, I will consult him. I think a, a good person, uh, like a good colleague or a good, um, like uh, even, 
even like Socrates once said that even a good, uh, no, I think someone from China, anyway, <laughs> uh, can learn from a little child. I mean, uh, nobody's above nobody. Um, so, like, a good boss will consider uh, what the person is saying and uh, make the final decision. Okay, what, what if it was, switch it. Your, your uh, coworker has to support you or your boss. Uh, I would leave the final decision and, follow, and be a team player. Like, I don't want to be one person uh, like, who overrides other people's opinion. Like, uh, we work as a team, uh, and uh, some, at some point, we can't always, everybody make the, um, the decision. There has to be one person that makes the final decision. And to respect that, I think uh, that is important in the, in the uh, company or So team. to sum that up, you would mm -hmm. want him to support the boss and not you? Uh, I would make him, make him, uh, uh, make me understand. But you want him to support the boss? Yes, I want him to support the boss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hong Chol chose the um, expertise of boss instead of partnership. So what about the judge's opinion and comments about Hong Chol's thing? I suppose you have to kind of forego your conviction to follow either the boss or, or your colleague, in this case, in mm -hmm. your case, boss. Um, how can you live with foregoing or uh, clipping your own conviction and follow somebody's suggestions or opinions or orders, uh, knowing that it is, in your mind, wrong? Well, I think at some point, everybody, when you're working as a team, when you're not working as an individual, that the team's voice speaks before the individual. So I think that if you want to be a team player, then um, at some point you have to sometimes compromise. But not always, but um, when, when it's uh, required, uh, you might have to. You will have to. Okay, um, good answer. But if I were your boss, and that's what I think you gotta think about, what kind of boss are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like this could definitely be the right decision for a more traditional boss who expects you to agree with him or her. Mm -hmm. So what I would want you to have helped me understand is which position do you believe is right? Because I believe that your boss doesn't need your approval. In the end, I think we all have to be humbled and we all have to say, I'll do what you tell me, but here's what I believe regardless. Um, and that's the point that I think you almost got to. Mm -hmm. I'll do what you tell me. But I think there's a step before that that says, but here is what I believe. I've done my homework, I've looked at all the scenarios, and you've hired me to get the best product out there and to keep you out of trouble. And so I've got to stay true to what I believe. Um, that's probably the direction that I would expect you to go if you worked for me. Okay, very impressive defense. And it's the Jinshil's time. So could you please last the situation, Ellie? Mm -hmm. You are the director of a department and you must fire one of the two people. One employee has a great personality, people skills, and is a team player. But he is not a good worker and hasn't contributed much to the company. And the, however, the other employee is a troublemaker and has a very bad personality and mean attitude. But he's a very competent worker and has done great things for the company. Who would you fire? Well, I'm going to fire a person with outstanding work performance because I thought I think that a person with great people skills, he, he always have a potential to learn skills by um, staying in the office. But those people who, ha who has outstanding work performance but doesn't have a good personality, he, he could actually affect the coworkers who's working together. Um, he might have bad effect to those people as well. So yeah, that's my decision. So you're going to keep the person that is not as good, he's really not as effective, but he's really nice to be around. The person with a better personality, he could actually make the work more productive, you know, like when, like I'm nervous right now, so I'm not really productive right now, <laughs> <laughs> but if you make everybody um, comfortable and feel really good to be in the office, I'm sure the company would develop in the way they want it. Okay, let, let me take the exact same scenario and times it by 10. You have 10 <laughs> salespeople. 
and 10 of them are very effective. They, are, they sell, mm -hmm. but they are not fun to be around. And then you got 10 that are rock and roll and fun to be around. <laughs> they don't sell a thing. Well, that's a different story. S S same scenario, same uh, scenario, I just magnified it. Well, if there were 10, 10, then I would probably fire five and five. <laughs> <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> okay, but, but, you're, but the question is, are you gonna keep the incomp not incompetent, the, the less effective employees and fire the effective employees because of their personality? At the end of the day, you're saying that you would fire them because they're not good to work with. Yes, you're not saying that they are incompetent, but they are less, less competent. So they, ha they always have the potential to learn. So yeah, I think it would be more effective for a long run. Potential is potential. The bottom line, if the guy's creating sales, even though he's not the funnest guy to be around, the, so you're saying the bottom line right now is not important, but we're working. We have potential to increase that bottom line, and we're going to put our faith in this employee that is nice to be around. Do I have to fire a person right now? Yeah, you have to fire one of them. <laughs> well, I'll still <laughs> go with my first decision. If um, having a potential, I think it's more than um, having a potential. That's the reason why I don't want to fire the good personality person. Because like I said, he could affect a lot of people. And it would be good for the company as a well. whole. OK. I can feel your compassion and moral principle and view of world and view of life. Very impressive defense. And what about the judge's opinion? Are you concerned with the message that you're sending? See, when you take an action like that, whether whoever you let go, you're sending a message to all of your, your employees that you reward what? Do you reward good behavior? Do you reward bad behavior? And so you're sending a message of what? Uh, this what guy. you expect. Yeah. So then they say, all we need to do is be kind, friendly, and happy, and she won't fire me. I'm okay. So is that the message you want to send? Um, I would explain that to my employees and tell them, um, tell them the reason why I did not fire this person but the other one, and tell them I thought it would be good for all of you because I felt like you guys are more comfortable around this person than the other one. And I thought that it would be productive for all of us. Um, you probably need more facts because the truth is you got two problems here. You got two employees with problems. And I think that, that end results are behaviors plus performance. So you do have to be careful. And results are what pay your bills and keep your business in business. So I think you'd have to look at both of them and understand who has the ability to, to do what it is you need them to do. All right. Thank you very much, judges. I'm sure they, all the contenders have learned a lot from the judges' opinions. Now, that was the end of second round. And unfortunately, one person will be eliminated at this point. So the question is, who will go on? I have the results. They are in. And this person will now go on to the third round and have a 50% chance to become the next Hanguk GM employee. And that person, I will announce, is, I'll let Ellie do it. <laughs> the first place goes to. Now it's time for us to announce who will take the second place and the third place. And this will determine who will go on to compete in the final round. Who will stay and who will be eliminated. Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. Between Jin Shil and So Young, 
The second winner place goes to So young, yeah. you look so relieved. I really expected I'm gonna go home. <laughs> Cause like before, uh, before the long two, my score was much lower than other two. So I was like, oh my God, it's my last ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. And Chin Shil, you did well. You did very, very well. And so we would like to send you our best congratulations for a, a, well, fun, a well fought uh, fight, if you will, uh, but we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Mm. Any last words, Jin Shil? Um, I can't see the reason why they are chosen. They are really talented, so, yep. <laughs> All right, thank you. Between Hong Chao and So Young, who will be the next official marketer for Hanguk GM? Please stay with us and go to final round, please. Just the two of you, Hong Chol and So Young, left. They set sail the long journey toward the GM's harbor. The destination is near here. Who will be the final winner? Final round is the in-depth interview. So the contenders must show everything that they have. Mm -hmm. So please continue. Yes, but I guess we'll hear from Christopher first. Okay, um, here's my question. My question is, you've dealt with our company, um, you know a bit about our company, and you've interacted with some people from our company now. I want you to tell me in your um, assessment, tell me what is it that Hanguk GM does not do well, in your opinion? Um, I think, uh a lot of is um, when people think, uh, when I ask the general, uh, my friends or the general public or see in the newspaper, people are starting to recognize um, Chevrolet, Hanguk GM, um, and like accepting it naturally. But uh, I don't see people um, sure about the service. And I think that's what um, Hanguk GM is right, working with, the 357 uh, service deal. Uh, they're acknowledged that Hanguk GM is, um, is strong and building up their service department. But I still think that the general public is not uh, familiar with it. So I think that is one of the things that has to be worked on. And I think um, Hanguk GM need to be more brand new, like the stage we, need, we are here. Um, a boxcar? of other brand was really f uh, famous in Korea uh, last, uh, f uh, last, last year. And as a woman, my friends really love the car, the box car. This is cute and the design was really creative. And, um, but Hanguk GM's image is a um, very strong car and like American type of car. But I think we need to uh, focus on new market because um, Orlando is for the family and um, Alfion is for um, boss and um, like 40, 50 guys and that kind of things are very user and familiar to us. So I think we need to make a um, niche market and focus on some brand new market like the boxcar did. Okay, thank you both very much. Thank you. What's the one question that we've not asked you, and you can, uh, I'll ask you to go first, so young, mm -hmm. just to be fair, right? <laughs> that we've not asked you, do you think it's important? It's why we should say you're the one that's chosen today. What's the one question I should ask you? Um, yeah, this interview and uh, contenders program was for about a month, but nobody asked about uh, what I like. Everybody asked, what you can do and what you can do well and what's your potential. But nobody's, nobody asked about what you like. 
I think what I like is the biggest thing to do something well. So I want to answer what I like, and I really like car and brand new thing. That's why I uh, I decided to apply for Hankook GM because Hankook GM is brand new, brand new car company in Korea, and everybody's are like baby in uh, in Hankook GM. So I like to contend. So that's why I'm here. And what I like is car and contend and try something new. So that's why. I can be the one for you. Okay, Hong Cho. Um, I think uh, one question that uh, nobody has asked me is, they know that I'm promoting either uh, in the mission a Spark or other cars, but nobody has asked me like, um, do you like the product or something like this? Uh, it's really important for me as a marketer because if I don't trust the product, or if I uh, if I don't feel right about the product. No how, matter how um, convincing I try to be, I cannot do it. So I think the first quality that I uh, teach myself as a marketer is, do you trust the product? Are you satisfied with the product? Then you can sell it. Then you can um, show people the qualities of it. If I don't trust the product, then I can't do anything with it. So um, the reason that I, w I think that I was able to come all the way here is because I trust the product. I've tested it, I've uh, heard uh, feedback from it, and uh, I can stand by, uh, behind it. And I think that was one of my um, biggest strengths. So uh, I think that was the question that um, I wish uh, people would ask me. How do you feel about the product? There are a lot of things that are not good about cars. Actually, it's not good for environment, I could say. Actually, the oil price is very high. And also, for some people, is a vanity symbol. They, they buy cars for you know, their status symbol, just for vanity. And it seems like if you are marketing these products to these, these people, then it seems like you're promoting or encouraging that kind of behavior. I mean, the, you can play devil's advocate in any situation, but it seems like th these are some of the things that you have to grapple with. Uh, as you pick this as a, your long-term career, how, how do you reconcile inside of you this kind of negativity and also with your passion for cars? Or is it a non-issue for you? Uh, I think that um, first, there's a lot of negatives when you're saying that, um, that a car has, like vanity, and uh, it can also um, be a bad sign of something that creates pollution. But on the other hand, um, there, are, there are many car makers that produce cars. But um, I think there are a few that can add value. For instance, um, companies that are making effort to make eco-friendly cars um, change the perception of what a car is. And uh, I think that is a step of when a company becomes more than a company. It becomes something with a value. And I think uh, that is something that um, can be pursued. In my case, um, we cannot live without car. When you come up with a uh, word transportation or vehicle, car is the first one. We cannot live without car. And we admit it. And actually now, car is more than a car, like I said. Uh, people see you with the with the car you ride and what well, the car you have. So it's actually a way to express yourself nowadays. That's why we want to add some value to the car. Are you saying the car is a, just a necessary evil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, because actually car has evil aspect. Car accident is all around us, and I think we need to admit it. But without car, we're going to have worse situation with, uh, than with car. We, um, uh, when, like, like ambulance, like when we need car really, um, really like uh, when you have a like, dying person here and we can take him to hospital with car very fast. Like that. And we need car. It's true. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Hankook GM produced four new cars this year, right? 
Yes. You all know that, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Among them, which do you think is the best and why? I like the Orlando, actually, because um, as a family car, I, uh, I like the, uh, um, the process, um, what you can do with it. Like, it's not just for one, uh, one consumer. It can uh, reach out to multi-consumers, so uh, I like the Orlando. Me, Spark. Yeah, because my mother loves it, and I really love it. <laughs> yeah, it's really affordable, and that's what I really need uh -huh. now. Yeah, because I am me, so <laughs> I can choose. And that's really um, suitable for me, and it's really cheap for, uh, yeah. And I think uh, it's worth more than the uh, extra price, so, and it's cute. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a marketer's <laughs> answer. <laughs> okay, that is the interviews. And we will now give each of you about, I don't know, half a minute, 30 seconds or so, just to give your final defense. This is why Hanguk GM should pick me. Uh, we'll start with So Young. Okay. What's my name? So Young. I'm really young and I have a young spirit. I know your company are young stage, so I can be the great worker for you as a young generation. And I'm gonna have more experience with you and I'm gonna be the perfect worker for you. I think you are not gonna regret to choose me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think at the current stage, what Hangu GM need is, is a person that uh, can be honest to the public. He has nothing to hide. Someone who knows his product, his qualities, and uh, make sure that uh, the consumers uh, get to know that kind of quality. And um, I think up to now I've been uh, doing everything I can to show that I have that kind of potential. And, um, and so if I get a chance to be the marketer, uh, I think I will show those qualities to Hanguk GM. Big applause to the excellent pleadings, please. And we will announce the final results in a minute. The results are in, the decision has been made, we have a new GM employee. Now we just need to tell everyone who it is. But we do, before we do that, So Young, how are you feeling? Um, really nervous. Uh -huh. Every time I say nervous, but this nervous is the biggest nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, congratulations for a well-fought fight regardless. You know, you've, you've competed very, very well. Hong Chol? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I feel like the past weeks that I've been preparing for this, it just flashes all through me and I'm kind of overwhelmed, but um, I'm comfortable with what I did uh, regardless of the outcome, so. Great, that's a great way to be. So let's see the final judgment and the reasoning for that. Please, Christopher. Um, you've both done a really nice job. You're both very impressive candidates, and you're impressive for different reasons. Um, Hong Cho, it's clear that you want this and that you have an innovative mind um, and the ability to think with a broad perspective. So Young, your passion is the first thing that comes through. You have creative energy, and you are not afraid to be different. Welcome to the Hanguk GM family, Mr. Kim Hong Chul. Again, 
Again, you looked shocked. You looked surprised. Is that a surprise of joy or really a, a surprise? Uh, it's it's a, a surprise because um, with contenders, you never know what to expect. So uh, even to the last minute, I, I wasn't sure about anything. So um, I really want to thank everybody, uh, my parents, all the people that supported me and believed in me. Uh, I'll do better in the future. I won't, I won't let you down. Thank you. You, you have an Academy Award winner right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks my family, my friends, my uncle, uh -huh. aunt. So Young, yeah. great job. You know what, the Thank thing you. I will always remember about So Young is the wink at the end. When uh. you did your introduction, you said, you watch, I will be there. So anyway, uh, what are your thoughts? I think he deserved it, and, but I'm gonna try more. And like he said, yeah, I'm gonna uh, take some advices from him and mm -hmm. other mentors. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be more than me. Uh -huh. And yeah, I'm gonna try again, yeah. Cool. Well done. Big yeah. applause for both of you. And thank you so much to the judges who has, um, you know, spent a lot of time together. Thank you once again. Thank you. So I'll make sure Mr. Hong Seul Kim will be the next employee for the Hanguk GM. And we will see the next contenders for Arirang TV next week. And thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Actually, I've gotten cards <laughs> from the directors and the headhunters, so I think I still have a hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was good, too. So I'm gonna try more and I'm gonna be like more than I did today. Contenders program was the hardest one, so I think another interview, I'm gonna do well. I got now a, a broader perspective on what marketing is and uh, what I can accomplish, confidence. Um, I think I can do so much more once I get into the field, especially the eight other contenders who've been supportive even though we're uh, competitors. So um, a lot of thanks and uh, keep watching me and I'll repay the favor. Contenders, a new challenge has begun. Arirang International TV is looking for a news reporter. A fierce competition among eight contenders. Their story will unfold on May 1st.